Don't read books. Just don't, don't do it. I read over 120 books last year. Total waste of time. I'm gonna explain why in this video because you guys always ask me, Alex, you're so smart, smart and I will ever be. You're also a billionaire. You're extremely woke and you have a great body. And you're family friendly now. I love watching with my kids. In fact, I, I stopped sending my kids to school because of COVID and I just have them gather around the television and watch your videos on repeat for 10 hours, which I say is finally good parenting in America. But that being said, when it gets down to reading books, I think they're super unproductive. I don't think they teach you things very well. And I'm gonna give you three things that are significantly better than books when it comes to growing and educating yourself and overall just being good at what you do, which is primarily going to be entrepreneurship or making more money if you watch this channel or just not being a little baby back bitch with the discipline of a glue eating baboon who can actually control himself and get done. And if you are actually interested in business tactics, at the end of this video, I'll show you where to get about 30 to 40 hours worth of, well, basically all the courses I used to sell. I don't sell courses to beginners anymore. I just use them as leverage to get you to watch till the end of the video. So stick around to the end and I'll show you where to get that as your reward again for free. So let's begin. So first off, why books are bad. It's very simple. There's two types of authors trying to share a lesson with you. I wrote a book, so I can tell you this from personal experience. There's authors who have to write more and authors that love to sniff their own farts. Let me explain what these two are. So when you're writing a book, for example, my book, The 10 Pillars of Wealth, I could have probably made about a 10,000 word blog post and explain everything I need to explain in that book very well in great detail with stories and jokes and metaphors, the whole nine yards. But instead, to get the book published, I had to get up to about 60,000 words. Those 60,000 words doesn't benefit me, it doesn't benefit you, it doesn't strengthen the lessons in the book, it's just you have to get the 60,000 words. And if you look at most marketing books, most books on business, it's the same exact thing. They put out a few key principles, and then all they do for the entire book is reinforce the principles to stretch out the pages because they can't submit a 10,000 page book to uh, the publishing agency they're working with. And if a person picks up a book and it's really short, people are even inclined to say, oh, that's not a book and I'm not gonna read that. There is some false honor in explaining things in way longer detail than they need. And that is essentially what books are. For example, one of the best books I ever read was the 80-20 rule. First few chapters of the book, you get it. You get the, what the 80-20 rule is. And then the next 10 chapters, it's him just like, and the 80-20 rule, you can use it to bake cakes. You can use it to impress your friends at parties and doff their das can use it to clap thy butt cheeks quicker than everyone around. It's, it's, it just goes on and on and on and repeats that the 80-20 rule is really cool. The Innovator's Dilemma, one of the best books I've ever read on business. It explains why large companies are constantly overtaken by small companies. And once you understand the reasoning behind it, that large companies often simply get overtaken, not because they're lazy, but because the new technology coming out doesn't make enough money to justify the amount of effort to be put into it at a company. And that when new technology is starting up, it usually only works in niche markets that are not substantial enough. And then when new technology is emerging that can take over the marketplace, usually when it's first uh, invented, it's a small business. For example, if a business is making, let's say $3 billion a year, new technology enters the marketplace. Well, usually at the start of it, it's only a business that works to niche customers. Therefore, you can only make about 10, $15 million a year from it at first. And then it slowly builds up, but it doesn't really have a market application. And usually only startups can pursue that type of business because $15 million a year is great for a startup. It's not great for a larger company. So larger companies constantly face this innovator's dilemma. You have just read a 300, 500 page book. I forget how long it was. It's like a 10 hour audible read. You now know everything the book has to tell you. See, that wasn't that hard to get, was it? Please, by all means, go read the book. But when you look at that, it's, it's not an effective way to teach someone something. Then there's another type of author. There's the author that loves to sniff their own farts. The Black Swan and Anti-Fragile. Amazing books written by Nassim Taleb. I might've mispronounced his name. However, Nassim is the world champion, the belt holding, world-class heavyweight master of sniffing his own farts. This guy's books, which basically talks about how humans are very bad at predicting the downside. And so we constantly mispredict the downside and get caught off by black swans. And because we constantly avoid problems, it makes us anti-fragile, easy to break. For example, if you have a company, you constantly want to be poking it and putting in problems in the company that test it because it's going to fragility test it 
and break things. And then you break things constantly, it only results in small breaks. But when you're breaking things or avoiding breaks on a large scale, like the banking industry, for example, when it does break, it breaks big time. That's essentially the books. Now, where there's many more lessons in that, basically these 15 hour books are about 13 hours of Nassim sniffing his farts and talking about how smart he is, his childhood, and telling irrelevant stories to restate the thesis of the book, which you can really get in about the first three chapters, and you could really get if you just took five or six pages from the chapters. So again, complete waste of time. Nassim, you're a very smart man, but I, I, I don't have the same capacity to waft your farts in my face for 15 hours. And that's an audible book, 15 hours. The books are thick and they say nothing except those things. Now, again, there's a few other things in it, but not 16 hours worth of lessons. So after reading about 120 books last year, I thought to myself, that took a lot of time and it really didn't help me very much as an entrepreneur. Here are three things I do this year. I've only read about 10 books this year. And I've actually read three books this week, but it's mainly just, I read them more for wisdom. I don't, I don't read them for business. I don't think you read books for business. And when it comes to business, here's the three things you should do instead. First off, watch CEO interviews on YouTube. Watch interviews with CEOs who have made 50 to $100 million. If they're a guru like me, don't watch them. Just, just don't watch them. If, if a person has not built a business worth $100 million, just, just don't listen to them. You don't want to listen to people who talk about building businesses. Listen to people that just have built businesses. And the beautiful thing about it is a lot of these people, they share everything they know without a course, and it's just sitting there on YouTube. You can go find an interview with Tobias Lucky, where he's basically sharing everything he did to build Shopify, and it has like 500 views on it. You can go find an interview with Nathan Barry, built ConvertKit from zero and without any ads, without any ads, got to one point, I think it's at 1.8 million a month right now. Company's worth easily a hundred million dollars. Just a nice guy, sits in his office, doesn't own any Lamborghinis or run any ads teaching you how you can get rich quickly. Doesn't, hasn't written a book about making money. Guy's a hundred million dollar company. Jason Cohen, I interviewed on the channel. I interviewed him because it's ridiculous. You go look at his videos online. He's not making videos, but he'll go and speak at conferences. He's a big old skyscraper in downtown Austin with a company that should be worth over a billion dollars right now. Go find his videos on YouTube. There's like a thousand views on them. Just go watch these guys. Go find CEOs of big companies or companies that have made 50 to hundred million dollars and listen to them. They just share everything for free because they're like, I don't have any reason not to share this. That's number one. Doing that has helped me so much as a CEO. When I read a book, I'll have maybe four to five lines of notes on most books. Because most books are a bunch of key ideas that aren't, are kind of more overarching viewpoints. And then hundreds and hundreds of pages explain those ideas. When I watch a CEO interview, if it's like a Tobias Lucky one, I'll have pages of notes from an hour and a half interview. I'll have so much to apply. Next one. Find people that are at your level, if you're a successful entrepreneur, or at about five to seven X your level. Once you get into the 10 X, you're kind of branching into people that are doing things on such a level that you really can't relate to it. Why? Well, first off, look, if I went and hung out with, let's say Bill Gates right now, it would be neat. It'd be really cool. There'd be a lot of life wisdom, but I wouldn't really be able to learn too much from him. Right now, my net worth is probably around 20 to $40 million. And that's all hypothetical. I want to stress, I'm not throwing it out and saying like, hey, you should copy me because I'm worth this amount. It, that would take what my company's valued and someone buying it. And there's all sorts of ups and downs. So let's just say my net worth is worth $0. I'm just pretty good at business. Okay. The good range for me to hang out with entrepreneurship wise is people that are worth about 30 million to about 300 million. If I can get people in that range right there and network with them, I'm going to learn a ton. And so what I actively try to do is message people in those ranges and make friends with them. And then I try and go and get dinner with them or meet up with them. Or then I like to build a network of about people in that range. And I, I try to constantly hang out with those people doing that, man, every single time I hang out with these people, I leave with weeks worth of motivation and ideas. It has been one of the most helpful things I've ever done. I have a few entrepreneur friends who are super successful, way more successful than I am. And I usually will talk to them on the phone about once a week or go over to their house and we'll just talk. That has helped me so much more than any book I could ever read. Do that. I'm not saying find mentors. I'm saying find people you're friends with that are super successful in what you want to do at the same time. If you're a cool person, there's other people that are cool doing the same thing you can do. And you don't go to their house and be like, so tell me about your marketing funnels. You go to their house and you have a few drinks, 
Talk about what's going on in the world. Talk about life, women, and bumper cars. I don't know. And then a business will usually come up because you're interested in business as well. But make genuine friends with other people that are doing things on a big level. And it's going to bring you up to that level. Finally, last one. This is weird. Teach people who are a little bit below you. Maybe like 50%, 60% below you. So if you're like at 100%, I messed up those percentages. You want to find someone who's doing maybe like 60% of what you are, 70% of what you are. Why? Well, the reason for this is when you teach people things, you have to look at your thoughts and your views and bring structure to them. So I, I don't do YouTube like this. I do YouTube just because it's fun. The things that I teach you guys, I'm not, I'm not pooping on you, but a lot of you guys are not, you're not building the same type of business as I am. And that's completely cool. This, this channel's for fun. I love, I love you guys all the same. Who I want to teach though is someone who's making 100,000, 150,000 a month, okay? And hasn't built uh, a company with a substantial value. Why do I do that? Because it helps me look at my processes and think about how to turn them into systems and how to uh, make them much more clear and understand why they work. A lot of things I do, I don't understand why it works. It just works. And so I can't always replicate it. When I'm teaching people, I learn a lot about how I think and then I can start replicating it. Also, the things they do help me see how I can improve what I'm doing and also pushes me harder to bend the things that I know and try and break them. And so that has been super effective for me as well. And so I have an Iron Mastermind, which you can't join. It is for business owners only. I'm not advertising. I'm not linking to it. I'm just mentioning it for the sake of this video where I help entrepreneurs in that range. And it's been super helpful to me growth wise. So if you're making, let's say $500 a month, find someone who's at $200 a month, get a group of them and help them. And it will help you think with much better clarity. It will help you evolve into a better leader. And then a lot of these people will sometimes hop over you and then you can learn from them. So those are the three things you should do besides sniffing Nassim Patel's farts. Whole, really, the whole entire point of this video was to complain about uh, Nassim's chronic fart wafting in his books. So hopefully this has saved you some time from getting Mario wafted by Nassim. And if you enjoy videos like this and you'd like to get like 20, 40 hours worth of actual business training for me that I used to sell for thousands of dollars. I don't sell courses to beginners anymore. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell because every week in my community tab, I make a post that links to all these courses, gives them away for free. You won't see that unless the algorithm shows it to you. And the best way to do that is like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. On top of that, check out the videos after this video. It's some of the best things that I've done in my life as far as controlling my mind, increasing my motivation, and have allowed me to work the hours I do, focus the way I do, and overall do okay in life. So I would suggest watching those videos. I'll see you in the next one. It's a dancing